Agent down. Assistance. Rogue reinforcements. You're halfway through the fight. Rogue drone detected. Sending you a specialization supply drop. Striker drone detected. An agent needs assistance. Rogue defender drone detected. of Seeker Mine detected. I'm sending you a specialization supply drop. Rogue Stinger Hive detected. Vital signs critical. Victory is yours. Good job.
Defender drone detected. Agent down. are acquiring the boost. Serious trauma detected. Rogue assault turret detected. The boost has been taken by allies. Rogue stinger hive detected.
incapacitated. An agent needs assistance. The enemy is acquiring the boost. Boost will soon deactivate. The boost is being taken by allies. Allies have acquired the boost. What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now I wanted to go ahead and just cut the gameplay there short um, because after doing this editing I found out that I had uh, about 30 to 35 minutes of gameplay and those were just clips. I had already edited them. So instead of just showing 35 minutes of that and just making this video, you know, however long, I'll just go ahead and cut it there show you the build breakdown and then let's get on with this because that takes a lot of time to uh, put more into it and unless if you guys really want all that gameplay I could put that in a separate video and just make a you know like a montage of this build because it's only with this build all of these clips and it just seems to melt anything in front of me I, I love it now shout out to the DOD Disciples of Doom so here it is, all of her glory. This is my Ridgeways Pride PvP build. I have been using this for about, I don't know, three days now since 11.1 .1 has dropped. And man, do I love it. I am getting everything and more out of this build. So what you guys don't know is in title update 11.1 .1 that was launched on Tuesday, they lowered the time to kill and they buffed the Ridgeways Pride chess piece. Ridgeways Pride chess piece. They didn't just buff the bleed radius, but they also buffed the armor regeneration. So bleeding edge, shooting an enemy within 15 meters will apply a bleed. So it was 10 meters, which was fairly short. You couldn't really use it with an AR or an LMG really because you'd get outgunned by an SMG so you were kind of forced to use the Lady Death however now that it's at 15 meters this really opens up the gap to use LMGs, rifles, assault rifles, SMGs, you know etc etc it, it actually builds more diversity for this chess piece so what I did is I tried it out with an AR and in fact I love it this is really, really fun to use. And I had to craft this AR, so it's not as good as I want it to be. So if I could find one with uh, one, one better attribute, I think this build would be perfect. But besides that, about every piece on this build is either max or right there near max. So it's a lot of damage. Even if they're running hazard protection, you're still doing a lot of damage. Check this out. So I'm at 60% crit chance on my FAMAS with 165.8 crit damage. Now, that is before all the other buffs. So regardless, I'm still hitting like a Mack truck. And this is a FAMAS with 105.9 base so I think that'll drop down to like 40 something, maybe 50 something PVP, let's see. So 42 PVP with 900 RPMs. This thing is great, especially in that little medium range right before the Lady Death becomes deadly. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna get these people off guard right there at like the 10 to 15 meter range, use your FAMAS and burn them the F down. This thing will burn through shields. Remember shields are health and you're using an AR with health damage. So just remember that. And you have a lot of crit 
So you're going to be critting quite a bit. And then whenever you do catch them on bleed, you have Sadist, which gives you 20% weapon damage just right off the bat. But that's not the kicker. The kicker is the chest or is the backpack. <laughs> Sorry. Now the backpack has that symptom aggravator talent. Amplifies all damage you deal to status affected targets by 30%. So you get 30% amplified damage on the FAMAS that is already getting 20% damage from Sadist and the, the enemy is already bleeding and you're shooting them with a FAMAS. Like it's ridiculous. The crit is amazing. You burn through anything that's in front of you. But uh, enough with the whole sales pitch, let's get into the build. So I'm using Technician. Reason I'm using Technician is this is PVP and I want to get as much damage done as possible. So I'm using that for my skills. I have Explosive Seeker Mine, which applies bleed, and it has a PVP damage of 272,000. That's not a whole lot, but it will take a good chunk of their armor away and put them on bleed. You want them on bleed so you can get that amplified damage and that damage from Sadist. So of course, besides the Explosive Seeker, I'm using the Stinger Hive. Now the Stinger Hive has 13 charges. The PVP damage is just under 95k, which is fine because it also has that bleed effect. And that's what you want with the Sadist and the Ridgeways chest piece. Just add that little Eclipse backpack and you are good to go. Now, going to the weapons. Obviously, I'm using the FAMAS, and it is the replica. Like I said earlier, I had to roll this. Now, this one came with crit damage under the attribute. I would much rather have damage to targets out of cover or damage to armor, whichever one. Um, if you get one of those, you're just making this build even stronger. Uh, it, at least I got crit damage, so that's good. I specced into crit damage, but you want the multiplicative damage instead of the crit. Now, as far as the mods, I'm using the crit damage Russian red dot sight, crit chance laser pointer, and then crit damage flash hider. For the magazine, I'm using the extended, which bumps my magazine up to that 50 rounds. Now, secondary, Vector 45 ACP. Again, this one is specced into crit, and it has Sadist on it as well. Uh, this 45 ACP, 92.8K total damage, and yeah, it smacks. So crit damage for the optic, crit damage for the short grip, and crit damage for the flash hider. Again, uh, oversized round for this one, bumping this magazine up to 45. And then even my sidearm has Sadist. Um, I have the double barrel sawed off, 1.4 million total damage. And that's with Sadist, so if they're bleeding, run up to them with that as well, pop, pop, and you're good to go. Now looking at the build itself, yes, it is squishy it, in that term. It does have a little bit of armor. However, you're packing such a hard punch and your skills are meant to keep them at a certain range that you should not have to worry about it. With the lowered time to kill, it is vital that you get the upper hand of that damage, that way you can kill them faster than they kill you. Remember, if they have a lot of armor, they're not gonna be hitting you as hard as you're hitting them. So it might take them just as long to melt through 700K armor as it does for you to melt through 2 million. You know what I mean? All right. So let's start with the mask. Providence defense mask. I am running two pieces of Providence. The brand set bonuses I get from this build, 15% headshot damage and 10% crit chance. Uh, this mask is God rolled. So I have max weapon damage, max crit chance and max crit damage. For that mod slot, I'm using crit damage at 11.9. Going to the backpack, it is the Eclipse Protocol Backpack. This one I rolled to Weapon Damage, and it came with Crit Damage at 10.3. For the mod, I have 11.8 Crit Damage as well. But we're only using this mainly 
for this talent because remember here I'll show you all of these gear set backpack and chess pieces have active talents they are forever active you don't have to run the four piece eh, except for right there you have to have rules of engagement but you, it doesn't matter all of these so just remember that you can run one system corruption backpack and get the hack protocol but remember you can't get the hack protocol unless you have the four piece so some of these you have to have the four piece it just so happens that the Eclipse Protocol talent is all about status affected enemies. And this just so happens to be a status effect build. Now besides the weapon damage, it does have that crit damage. And then I threw more crit damage on there. It's just really bad mofo. Now the gloves, Providence defense, again, 14.9 on the weapon damage, 11.9 on the crit damage. So I'm right there near God rolled. And then I threw on there max crit chance. Going to the knee pads, you have Seska knee pads. The Seska brand set bonus I get from this build 10% crit chance. As far as the attributes, 14.8 weapon damage, 5.9 crit chance, and max crit damage. Going to the holster, holster is Fenris. Now the Fenris brand set bonus I get from this build is the 10% AR damage. For the attributes, 14.9 weapon damage, 4.4 crit chance, and then again, max crit damage. And then finally, you can't have this build without this chest piece. This is the Ridgeways Pride Exotic Chest Piece. Now, to get this chest piece, you have to go through the summit, collect the exotic parts, then beat the summit to get the exotic quest. Once you get the exotic quest, you have to complete all of the tasks within that project, and then it will give you the blueprint. It is a long thing and a long grind ahead of you if you do not have it. And if you haven't even tried the summit until 11.1, .1, it seems that it's even harder to get the exotic parts now than it was before. But let's put all that aside. Here's the chest piece. Ridgeway's Pride, it comes with all reds. So I have weapon damage, crit chance, and crit damage. So of course I threw on the mod slot more crit damage at 11.8%. What makes this chess piece so special is the talent Bleeding Edge. Shooting enemies within 15 meters applies a bleed to that target. It also repairs you from 3 to 48% armor per second for every enemy you have bleeding within the 15 meters. So the repair strength goes off of how many enemies you have bleeding. So if you're playing conflict, you can't get more than four. So just remember that. So if you're going to promote this build to have, you know, 100,000 million armor regeneration, because you're gonna have five people bleeding and you're playing conflict, reality is you're only gonna have four people bleeding. But regardless, I'm not using that for the armor region. I'm using it to catch the enemy on bleed and then utilize that Eclipse backpack for that amplified damage, which just melts through everything. I don't care what it is. With the lowered time to kill, it doesn't matter what armor you're running, it will melt through it. You can rewind back to that gameplay. I've melted Foundry Bulwark four piece shield builds with one mag it's ridiculous one mag to clean out their shield and then one mag to kill them that's stupid anyways so that is the build overall looking at it again overview two piece provenance for the headshot damage and crit chance seska for the crit chance fenris for the ar damage Ridgeway's Pride for the Apply a Target to Bleed, and then the Eclipse Protocol Backpack for that uh, Aggravator Talent, which gives you that Amplified Damage. Make sure you're running your weapons with Sadist or Perfect Sadist so that you get that extra damage to bleed enemies, and then make sure you are running the Bleed Skills uh, in other words, make sure that your skill will apply the bleed status effect on targets.
So Explosive Seekers and Stinger Hive. Finishing off with the stat sheet. This is for the FAMAS, but we are using it in PVP. And it doesn't matter. So PVP, 42,310 weapon damage, 60% crit chance, 165.8 crit damage, and 70.8 headshot damage. Of course, it's an AR, so it comes with health damage. Going to the we weapons tab, 99.6 all weapon damage bonus with 40% AR damage bonus. So I have 139.6 damage bonus just using the FAMAS. It's pretty sweet. For the gear talents, I'm using the Symptom Aggravator from the Eclipse Protocol and the Bleeding Edge from the Ridgeways Pride. Defensive tab, 726K armor with 200 and just under 94K max health. Explosive resistance and the hazard protection is because of my watch level. And remember, my watch level currently is 758. So if you have a watch level that is higher than mine, you might be able to get your numbers a little bit higher in certain areas. And if your watch level is lower than mine, you might not be able to get your numbers quite as high as mine. So remember, a lot of this has to do with your watch. So make sure that you are upgrading that because until, I don't know, what's the level you get when you max it out? Uh, let's see. So I'm at 758. So I'm assuming you would probably have to go to a thousand to max out your watch. So yeah, it's a constant grind. Anyways, this is my Ridgeways Pride PvP build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, man, the only thing that comes to mind is I really think they might nerf status effect builds now because of this. I don't know. It, it seems they buffed the Ridgeways Pride just to see how high they could go. I don't know, because a couple patches ago they buffed the Eclipse Protocol backpack. And now they're buffing this chess piece. It just seems like they're wanting you to test this out. And man, is it a nice combination. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, hit that thumbs up. If you want the full gameplay montage of this build and the gameplay clips before this build breakdown wasn't enough, let me know in the comment section below. I will give you the full gameplay montage. Uh, but besides that, let me know in the comment section below what you think. How do you run Rid Rid Ridgeways Pride chess piece? Jesus, it's a tongue twister. Anyways, let me know how you run the chess piece. And yeah, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Kamikaze Von Doom. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.